What is going on everybody? Today we take a look at the Boss Katana Air and we embrace the challenge of limitation. So a few months back, I got coaxed into buying a Boss Katana Air. Uh, some friends of mine and I, we all went in on a group buy and we saved us some cash in the process. Now I've been on the fence about adding a Bluetooth speaker to my studio setup so that I could uh, quickly check and reference mixes with other speakers and, and those kinds of things. But I couldn't really justify spending a couple hundred dollars for just a Bluetooth speaker. Then you also got to consider that I have a small arsenal of big boy amps. So there was really nothing that draw dropping about a wireless guitar amp. But Boss decided to put both of them together and then my interest was piqued. For those who might not know, the Boss Katana Air is a wireless guitar amplifier that boasts its lineage from the Katana lineage of amp. It comes loaded with tons of effects and a number of amp options to satisfy any palette. Now today, I'm really not going to go over all the effects and all the sounds that you can get out of this thing. That's already been done and a little bit more on that in a minute. But what I did want to talk about was the practicality and utility of such a thing. Before I got the Boss Katana Air, truth be told, I really didn't practice guitar that much. If I find myself having 10 or 15 minutes to spare, I really don't want to fire up my big boy amps and burn tubes that way. So since its arrival, I found myself picking up the guitar much more often to flush out ideas and to get a little bit of practice in, because God knows I need it. Now, don't get me wrong. As of the filming of this video, the Boss Katana Airs go for 399, 400 US dollars. Now that is a lot of scratch for a practice amp that essentially you cannot gig with. While it does get loud, it definitely doesn't get practice loud or gig loud by any stretch of the imagination. However, for me, the invocation of creativity, you know, just being able to pick up a guitar and flush out an idea or be able to get some practice in certainly has its value to me as well. The Boss Katana Air is very sleek looking and would fit in in any studio, dorm, or bedroom. However, today I wanted to challenge myself, embrace a challenge of limitations, if you will. So for this demonstration, I chose to use my Telefunken CU29 microphone. The reason being is I knew the battle would be trying to get a well-rounded tone through such a small speaker. Smaller speakers tend to pronounce mid-range much, much more prominently. And I also wanted a microphone that would be able to polish off the top end just a little bit to try to give me a fighting chance to get a great tone. Now for the bass, in the mix, I did also blend a DI tone in with a mic tone, which is typical standard affair in modern productions when you have a, a bass amp tone and you'll blend in a raw DI. You know, so nothing fancy, no, no kind of wizardry going on there. Now, I did capture DIs the old-fashioned way. However, when I went to reamp, I just simply plugged in the wireless transmitter to my Radio X amp and sent the signal into the Katana Air that way. So in essence, I wanted to see if I was placed on a desert island if I could get a workable guitar and bass tone from this thing. And we're about to find out. So without further ado, let's roll. <laughs> Well, there it is. What'd you folks think? That certainly wasn't the worst guitar tone I've ever been forced to work with, but it wasn't that bad, honestly. I was actually quite impressed with the clean tones, just as, as they were. So hopefully this might spark or encourage some of you to embrace the challenge of limitations. You never know, you might surprise yourself. All right, folks, you know the drill. If you have any questions or comments, you know what to do, leave them in the comments below. I make an effort to respond and reply to everybody, so uh, don't be shy. So until next time, remember, be a good human, and we'll see you soon.